In this video, we take a look at assembly language, including following and writing simple programs with the Little Man computer instruction set. So the very first languages were direct machine code languages that required programmers to enter binary combinations of ones and zeros. These languages, of course, were incredibly difficult to program with, and this quickly led to the creation of assembly languages. Assembly languages substituted the binary codes with simple sequences of letters known as mnemonics. All assembly languages are classified as low level languages. The assembly language is directly translated into binary machine code by a translator known as an assembler. Under exam conditions, you need to be able to use the assembly instruction set for the little man computer. Now, LMC is a conceptual computer often used in education theory and exams to help students learn, test and understand the basics of assembly language. The instruction set contains just 11 simple instructions or mnemonics, which are shown on the left. A real instruction set in assembly code would contain many more. There are many free LMC simulators on the web that allow you to practice assembly code. We've provided a link here to which one which we think is excellent and the screenshots in our video will be referring to this simulator. So before we start looking at some programs in LMC, let's run through various parts of this interface so you can understand how it all works. So on the right, we have RAM main memory with 100 memory locations, numbered 0 to 99. Inside the CPU, we have an arithmetic logic unit. We have an accumulator to store the results of the last operation or calculation. We have a program counter to store the address of the next instruction in memory. An actual instruction register to hold the first digit of the instruction read from memory. This is our op code. An address register to hold the second and third digits of the instruction read from memory. This is our operand. We also have an input tray where a number can be typed if this is needed, and an output area where any number's output will be printed. So a couple of little notes. The program counter will only ever hold two digits, and that's from 0 to 99, while the accumulator can hold three digits and also a sign, so numbers from minus 999 to positive 999. When an instruction is read from memory, as we said, the first digit is used to decide what to do. As with real assembly languages, to help us write programs more easily, each instruction type is given its own mnemonic, which the LMC assembler converts to the corresponding code. Note that the LMC computer can't actually tell whether memory contains instructions or data. Most modern computers can segment their memory, but there must be a way for the output for one program to become the instructions of another. The assembler also allows us to name addresses, and these names are called labels. Any word that is not recognized as an instruction is assumed therefore to be a label. If the labels before the instruction or DAT, the LMC defines the label as representing that address. If the label is after the instruction or DAT, the address is substituted for the label. The two boxes to the left of the LMC are the input to the assemble function and the intermediate output with the labels converted to the correct numbers. 
Each line of LMC code can have up to three parts. A label, a mnemonic, and the data it applies to. So let's actually write this program out into the top left box of the LMC simulator. Once you're done, press the red submit button. The LMC simulator will then convert the program into the intermediate output for you, which will appear in the right hand column. You can then press run and watch your program execute. You might well need to watch the simulation a few times to get a really good feel for what actually is going on, as at first it's sometimes not that intuitive. You can speed up or slow down the simulation with the controls highlighted here. An explanation of what is happening at each stage of the simulation is provided by this little robot and his speech bubble at the bottom. So a few things to notice as you're going through the simulation. Each instruction, of course, is loaded into its own memory location in main memory or RAM. You will notice how each instruction has to be fetched from memory first and then decoded in the CPU before it can be executed. As each new instruction cycle begins, the program counter is incremented by one to make sure it always holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. So, Having watched this simulation a few times, what does this assembly program actually do? So let's see if you got it right. So first of all, we go off and fetch the instruction in location zero and update the program counter. So here comes instruction 901. So nine goes into the instruction register and zero one to the address. Now nine says input a number. So the user supplied five and it's gone to the accumulator. We now go fetch the next instruction incrementing the program counter. So 305 comes back, 3 is going to go into the instruction register and 05, and 3 says store whatever's in the accumulator in memory location 5. So there goes the data 5 and the memory address 5, and we've stored it. So now we fetch the third instruction incrementing the program counter again. So we're going to fetch another 901, so that's another input from the user. So that's going to go in to the instruction address register, decode it, execute, and now the user types in four. That goes into the accumulator. So we now fetch the next instruction. So this one's from memory location three, and again we've incremented the program counter. So here comes instruction 105 back to be decoded. And it says add the contents of memory location five. So we're going off to fetch the contents of memory location five, which of course was the number five we stored earlier, and add it to what's in the accumulator, which is four. So we're gonna do five plus four, there it goes into the LU, and the result's nine, and that goes back into the accumulator. We fetch the next instruction, again, incrementing the program counter. This is instruction 902, and we can see from the table, this is going to be outputting the contents of the accumulator. So we decode it, grab the content of the accumulator, and output it. And now we fetch the next instruction, again incrementing the program counter as always. This is 0005, and of course when we take the opcode, which is the zero, as we can see from our table, this is going to halt the program. So effectively this program has done 5 plus 4 and stored the result 9 in the accumulator and outputted it to the user. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the features of assembly language?